So now, we want to start with the functions and in function we can say f equal to a to b it is a function in which the a is treated as a domain and b will be called as a codomain. So, the function each element of set A have unique element of set P. Each element of set A has unique element of set B and collection of these assignment is called as a function. So means function means that is f such that a to b where a is a domain and b is a codomain. It means that each element of set a has a unique element of set b and collection of such arrangement it is called as a function. So we can say it is a set and a is a member of k where a is an element a is a set. So f of a it is denote the unique element of b it denote unique element of b so it is also called as a image of f and image of f we can represent with the help of either im of f or range of f so the image of function should be represent either the im in bracket f or range of f so we can take even function fx equal to x square we can also represent the same function in the manner of x tends to x square or y equal to x square in y equal to x square which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable so here we can say that the x is independent variable but instead of y y is depend on value x so it is a dependent variable and it is called as an independent variable so now this is the basic concept about the function now how the function has a relation now next we can discuss function as relation so here we can just give function f equal to a to b give a relation of a to b which is called as a graph of f so here the graph of f equal to a comma b such that a is a member of a and b equal to f of a so what we can say the function has a relation it is a nothing but a ordered pair of a comma b f equal to a to b is a function it is treated as a graph of f equal to a comma b is ordered pair where a is a member of set a and b equal to nothing but f of a so two functions we can say the two function f equal to a to b and the another function we can take which is called again a to b are equal we can say this two function f equal to a to b and z equal to a to b are equal when we can say f equal to z so f of a or f of a equal to z of a for every a is a member of a we can create the both function are equal when f equal to z so that is the when the function will be treated as a relation so now the next we can write a definition in a function f equal to a to b is a relation from 
a to b if that is nothing but a subset of a cross b such that each a is a member of a belong to unique ordered pair a comma b in function f so that is the definition between the how the function relate to the in the form of a to b that is nothing but a closed product of a cross b such that each element a is a member of that is element of set a belong to unique ordered pair a comma b in f so that is the definition of the function now what is the composition of function so composition is nothing but we can take f equal to a to b another function g equal to we can take b to c so you can know that the b is nothing but a co domain and the another function it is a domain both are the same so at that time the function the new composition function will be moved from a to c so at that time you can use the composition of the function and the composition of function should be represent in the form of c composite f of a equal to nothing but c of f of a so the composition of the function you can also identify with the help of f equal to a to b and now the function is f composite that is identity matrix which is equal to a but now identity matrix of c which is again uh, f equal to f so where we can take i a and i b are identity matrix so here what we want to know the composition of function is nothing but when the two function f equal to a to b and g equal to b to c is given where the first function co domain and another function domain will be same so at the time when the composition is nothing but it is regarding to the a to c so we can just represent the composition of function in the form of z composite f that is a small o of a equal to g of f of a now the next we can discuss the types of a function next is the types of function generally the function should be divided into the three parts first part is the one to one function and one to one function is also called as a uh, we can call it as a function name is an injective function the another one is the on to function and third one is the uh, on to function is also called as a surjective function and third one is called as a invertible function or we can also call as a bijective function so one by one we can discuss one to one function in one to one function we can represent function given a to b if different element in domain if different element in domain a have distinct image distinct image if f is 1 to 1 then f of a equal to f of a dash and we can say implies that uh, a equal to a dash so what is the meaning if different element in domain a domain is nothing but it is a domain it is called as a co domain and it is called as a domain so the domain of a have distinct image in b that is distinct image we can call so f is a one to one f of a have f equal to f of a s so we can say a equal to a s so every domain a have a distinct image in b we can call as a one to one function or we can also call as a injective function so now the next function is on to or we can also call as a surjective so we can say f equal to a to b a function which is called as a surjective 
if each element of B is the image of some element of A. So, and each element of B, that is the codomain, is the image of some element of A, then that function is called as a onto function or a subjective function. So, next third is the invertible or we can also call it as a bijective function. So, the bijective function, a function f equal to a to b is invertible if its inverse relation, if its inverse relation f inverse is function from b to a. So it is called as a invertible function or we can call it as a bisective function. So now these are the type of function. Now with the help of example we can identify which function is a one to one and how to identify with the help of uh, one to one, one to n invertible function. So we can take even an example in which we can more clarify. So here the function is a to b, g function is given from b to c and sorry that is f1, that is f1, it is f2, it is f3 function, it is from c to d, f4 function from d to e. Now we can take uh, this a, b, c with a set of three elements in set of b, we can consist the element of 1, 2, 3, 4. In set C, we can consist the element of R, S, T, V, uh, R, S, T, U. And in the set of uh, D element, we can consist the element 2, V and W. And in the last element, we can consist of X, Y and Z. Now, this is the set A, B, C, D and E. It is a function f1, it is f2, f3 and it is a f4. Now, there is a relationship between this one is a function have moved to towards 4 and b function to, uh, sorry, the element of b relate to 1 and c relate to 2. Now, 1 relate to r and 2 relate to T and 3 relate to U and 4 relate to S. Now the R relate to V and S relate to W and T relate to W and U relate to V and V relate to Y and W relate to Z. Now in this diagram, we want to show which is a one-to-one -one function, which is a onto function, which is an invertible function. So, with the help of function f equal to a to b, and the function one-to-one -one says that every the image of the set of a element domain have a distinct image. So, this is the a domain in a have four, b to one, c to three. That is distinct image. We can say f one is one to one function. Because every domain have a distinct image to B, we can say it is a one-to-one -one function. Now, the next is F2 of B equal to C and F3 of C equal to D. So, we can say F2 and F3 are onto function. Why it is onto function? Because every B has an image of A. So, it is called as an onto function. But since f1 is not an onto function, because the three element is a member of B, three element which is no image under the A, they have no relation between the three, that's why it is not a onto, it is one to one, but not onto. So f1 is not onto, and f3 is onto, but not, f3 is onto, but not one to one. 
Why it is 1 to 1 not? The F3 in the F3 every F3 1 to 1 relation says every domain have a distinct image, but R and U both have the same image V. So that's why it is not 1 to 1. But even though it is a undo function. So F4 is neither 1 to 1 nor on 2 because first it is not 1 to 1 because not distinct image and not it is on 2 because the on 2 function says every image have the uh, at least one of the image should be consistent in the part of D which is not existing so that's why we can say F1 is 1 to 1 not on 2 F2 function and F3 both are on 2 but F4 is neither on 2 1 nor on 2 so now this is the part of function now the next part we can discuss the mathematical function and so next is the mathematical function exponential and log function so first function we can take that is a floor and ceiling floor and ceiling function so x is a real number and we can lies in between the two integer value which is called as a floor and ceiling values so x lies between the two integer called x is a real number lies between two integer called ceiling and floor ceiling means that is a low end value we can get and floor means upper end values so the, it will be represented in the form of this one it is called as a floor of x that is greatest integer that integer that does not exceed x and this is the ceiling ceiling of x that means least integer that does not less than x so x is itself an integer then we can say floor of x equal to ceiling of x so otherwise we can say the floor of x equal to ceiling uh, floor of x plus 1 equal to ceiling of x so here we can use the floor and ceiling value in which we can the example is that we can take the value of 3.14 it is a floor value though the, that is equal to 3 but when we can take a ceiling value of 3.14 we can take the higher end value which is nothing but equal to 4 so that generally it is used in a complex mathematical calculation where we can use the floor and ceiling value it is the value we can call as a floor which is greatest integer that does not exceed x so x is an integer value 3.14 we can consist only 3 value ceiling value that is at least integer that does not less than x so it is 3.14 so we can always take it as a 4 value not the 3 value so that is the way in which we can find the floor and ceiling value so in general way we can say the floor means we are lower end value and ceiling we can use the upper end value so next is the next function we can discuss which is the integer and absolute function next is the integer and absolute function so integer and absolute function we can use the symbol ab as absolute of x so here the thing is that when we want to find the value of mod minus x which is nothing but equal to mod of x so suppose for example we can find the integer value of minus of 3.14 which is nothing but 3 
we can find the integer of root 5. Root 5 always generate 2 point something value, but it is the value should be integer generate only 2 value. So similarly, when we can find the absolute value, so minus 15, it is always generate 15. So mod x equal to mod of minus x is always generate the mod x. So that's the way in which we can find the integer and absolute value. Now the next function is called as a hash function. So next one is called as a hash function. Basically, hash function is used in in the case of simple table of compilation. Simple table of compilation. It is also used in case of direct addressing. In memory operation, it is also used accessing file handling. So basically, these are the hash function suddenly used in a computer science where the in compilation when we have to create a simple label at that time indexing we can use the hash function. Direct addressing in memory operation we can use the hash function and accessing in file handling or in key indexing whether you want to search a particular data in a database we can use the indexing with the help of we can use the hash function so in hash function basically it is a function f equal to k to a where k is the set of keys k is nothing but set of keys and a is a physical address a physical address in which they can also represent in the form of modular arithmetic f of n equal to n mod m that is the function in which we can represent in the hash function so suddenly we can also solve the problem based on the hash function how to perform the indexing, how to generate the key values so that is the application of the hash function now the next function is the exponential function in exponential function we can take a to the power m equal to a up to n number of times and we can know a to the power 0 equal to 1 a to the power minus m equal to 1 upon a to the power m so we can just create a to the power m upon n equal to n into square root of a to the power n which is n root a to the power n so in that way, we can find the exponential function. Exponential functions are based on the also log function. So next one we can take as a logarithmic function or log function, which are also related to exponential function. So in that case, we can take like b is the positive value, b b a positive numbers, and log of any positive log of any positive base b we can represent in the form of y equal to log x base b so it is equivalent statement we can generate it is nothing but the statement is b to the power y equal to x so it is in the exponential form it is in the form of logarithmic form so we can just find of log 8 base 2 equal to 3 it is nothing but the value we can find is equal to 3 since 2 to the power 3 equal to 8 so we can take the both end side log we can generate log b to the power y equal to log x base b and it is b base b it is nothing but 1 we can just take y equal to log of x base b so y of log of y equal to log x base b we can also represent in the form of b to the power y equal to x. Similarly, when we can find log a base 2 equal to 3, so what we can do? We can just take 2 to the power 3 equal to 8. Now we can take both and sign log. It is a log 2 to the power 3 base 2 equal to log 8 base 2. 2 base 2 is 1, it is nothing but 3 log 2 base 2 equal to log 8 base 2 so 
3 equal to log 8 base 2. So, that is the relation between the logarithmic function and exponential function. Here, we can take the three types of logarithmic function we can use. One is the base of 2, another base 10, another base e. So, e is called as a natural log. It is 2 is called as a binary log. It is called as a natural log. And the base 10, which is called as a uh, common law, this is called as a common law. So that is the way in which we can find out the different type of log function. Now the next one is the remainder function. of modular arithmetic remainder function of a modular arithmetic here we can just keep, let k be any integer and m is a positive m p positive integer then k mod n denotes integer remainder it denotes integer remainder when k divides m when k divides m so here k mod m is unique integer r such that such that k equal to m q plus r where r lies in between 0 to m where the r lies in between 0 to m so we can just find 25 mod 7 so that value equal to 7 3 is 21 it is remainder is the 4 it is simply k divided by m but k is negative if k is negative then it is a positive value then there is no problem we can just find 28 mod 5 it is 5 5 is 25 it is remainder is 3 so the value will be generated as a 3 so when k is negative then device mod of k modulus k by m to obtain r dash and we can use the formula k mod m equal to m minus r dash that is a very useful formula where r is not equal to 0 if the r is equal to 0 then the resultant value becomes 0 so here we can just take even formula minus 35 mod 4 and we can generate this one or minus uh, 35 mod 12 so we can find the value what is the n n is nothing but modulus is 12 minus r is r is is the k divided by m 35 divided by 12 that is the mod minus mod 35 which is nothing but 35 and which is divided by 12 so 12 to 24 remaining is 9 so 12 minus 9 it is equal to 3 so that is the way in which we can find when the k is negative so how to calculate the modular arithmetic so they can say if the negative number so mod k divided by n to obtain r dash and r dash not equal to 0 if r is equal to 0 then resultant value becomes 0 so here we can take minus 36 mod of 3 here it is completely divided uh, by 36 so what we can say it is r is equal to 0 so the value becomes 0 so similarly we can find the minus uh, 371 of mod 8 so here m this one and r dash it is remainder is 3 when 371 divided by 8 
the remainder should be generated 3, so it is generated as a 5. The value become 5. So mod is also used in a confidence relation. So we can say here the mod is used for mathematical congruence relation which denoted as a equal to b mod m if and only if m divides b minus a so m is called modulus and a equal to b of mod n it is read as a a congruent relation to b so that is the a congruent relation to mod b it is represent this is useful notation we are using 0 equal to m mod m and a plus minus m equal to a of mod n so in that case that congruence relation we want to find it so here we can use the mod is used to mathematical congruence relation and the relation denotes in the form of a is equivalent relation of b mod m if and only if m divides b minus a a equal to b mod m a is it is also equivalent to we can represent in the term of a congruent relation to b mod m so here there is two properties we have to use 0 equal to m mod m and a plus minus m equal to a of mod m it is also called as a arithmetic modulus or we can also call as a clock arithmetics so here we can take one or two examples in which we have to more clarify about the arithmetic arithmetical modulo 12 or in clockwise arithmetics in which we can find the 6 plus 3 what the value of in modulo arithmetics so what we can do 6 plus 3 is nothing but 9 and mod of 12 so that value that value will be equivalent to the 9 now the another value we can find out which is 6 plus 9 so 6 plus 9 and it is nothing but what the value is equivalent to so 6 plus 9 is equal to 15 15 mod 12 15 mod 12 it is only value should be generated as a 3 here the value should be generated as a 9 similarly we can find the another problem which is 7 into 5 here 7 into 5 in case of modulo 12 so 7 into 5 35 mod 12 it is generated as a 9 that value is equal to 9 in a modular arithmetic so similarly we can find 1 minus 5 so here it is a very interesting question in 1 minus 5 what we can do it is minus 4 mod of 12 then what we can do next next is it is a negative number so the formula which formula we use m minus r dash and r dash not equal to 0 what is the m? m is a 12 minus r dash r dash is 4 divided by 12 it is a 4 the value become 4 the resultant value become 8 so 1 minus 5 equal to 8 in case of modulo arithmetic 12 so that is the concept we have to discuss now the another problem is that 2 plus 10 so 2 plus 10 equal to in case of modulo 12 so what we can do it is a 2 plus 12 then it is a 12 mod 12 it is nothing but a, we can find there is no remainder it is equal to 0 so that is the part in case of remainder function and modular arithmetic here we can generally we can use the k mod m sum function another is the k equal to mq plus r and r value lies in between 0 to m so if the k is negative then m divides by to obtain r dash so we can just subtract m minus r dash where r dash not equal to 0 so now the mod is also used in mathematical congruence relation 
where we can use certain two functions a equal to b mod m if and only if m divided by b minus a. It is also called as a concrete relation to b modulo m. So that way in which we can find the remainder function modulo arithmetic and convergence relation. So now the next one is we can use the sequence and in sequence we can say there is a any sequence we can start with the a1, a2, 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 so a n equal to 1 by n where sequence begin with n equal to 1. So now this is the sequencing. Now the next is the index set or index class of set. Here we can take the index function i f such that i implies to s where i is the index and s is the set. Here we can take a collection of object a i which is i as a member of i and we can take the union of i as a member of i of a of i equal to x such that x is a member of a i that is a collection of subsets where for some i is a member of i in the intersection of i is a member of i of a i equal to x such that x is a member of a i and for all i is a member of i so that is the way in which we can finding the indexing of the class sets. Now the next part we can discuss which is a recursive function. So recursive defined function a function which is called by itself is called a recursive function. So Generally in recursive function we can use the three type of function one is the factorial function, another is the Fibonacci series function and third is the Ackermann function. So generally Ackermann function we can discuss in the theory of computation but generally more we have to use this type of function which is generally treated as a recursive type function. So a recursive defined function, a function which called to itself is called a recursive function. And there is a certain properties. What are the properties? Certain properties of the recursive function. First is the first property is that base value for which function does not refer to itself. And second property each time function refer to itself each time function refer to itself so argument of function must closer to the base value argument of function must closer to base value so these are the two properties we have to use in case of recursive defined function and a function which called by itself is called as a recursive function. What is the base value? Base value is the value in which uh, the further after the base value the function should not be referred to itself. That is a terminal point of the recursive function. In a factorial of uh, n number we can find the 0 factorial is a base value. After 0 factorial the function should be terminated. So 0 factorial value equal to 1. So first we can take the example of the factorial of a given number so if the factorial n equal to 0 so n factorial equal to 1 if n is greater than 0 the n factorial equal to nothing but n into n minus 1 of factorial so in that case we can suppose find the factorial 5 5 factorial is nothing but 5 into 4 factorial then 5 into 4 into 3 factorial then we can find 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 factorial so it is going to the near to the approaching to the base value. So 3 into 2 into 1 factorial. After 5, 4, 3 into 1 and 0 factorial. 
the zero factorial one. After zero factorial one, the function does not go to itself. Similarly, the another approach is called as a Fibonacci series. So in Fibonacci series, we can say n equal to zero. So n and n equal to one, f n equal to n, and n is greater than is one. If f n equal to f n minus one plus f of n minus two. So that way, in which we can find out the Fibonacci series means the initial two terms will be fixed zero and one. Then next is the preceding two terms addition. So preceding two term addition is nothing but f of n plus n minus one plus f of n minus two. It is just like that zero one one. Now the preceding two term addition of preceding two term one plus one two one plus two three then five then eight then thirteen then twenty one and so on. So it is nothing but preceding two term addition. It is zero plus one 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 plus one two one and two three three plus five eight eight plus five thirteen. So that's the function we have to use f n equal to f n minus one plus f of n minus two. Now the another very important function which I again use. Which is called as a Ackermann function. So the last function we can discuss, which is called as a Ackermann function. So Ackermann function, in which we can say a function, in which we can take a function if we can take on the two argument n equal to zero, then a of n comma n equal to n plus one. If n not equal to zero. But n equal to zero, then a of m comma n equal to a of m minus one comma one. M not equal to zero, n n not equal to zero, a of m comma n equal to a of m minus one comma a of m of n minus one. So that is the way in which that function is called as a Ackermann function, and that is also used to compute the value of. If suppose we can say a of two comma one, we can compute using Ackermann function. So two is m and n. We can just substitute the value of m not equal to zero and not equal to zero. We can use this formula. If m is not equal to zero but n equal to zero, we can substitute with this formula. So that is also called as a Ackermann function, and this is also part of the recursive defined function. So that way we can discuss about the regarding about the part of the functions. Now we have to take a few problems based on the function. So the first problem we can discuss that is the problem first. If f of n equal to f of n by 2 plus 1, f of 1 equal to 1, it is a recursive function substitution. It is a recursive function substitution, and it is a greater than or equal to 1. So, how to solve this type of problem based on the recursive function? First, we can take f equal to n by 2. f of n equal to f of n by 2 plus 1 now the another value f of n equal to f of n by 4 plus 1 next value again because you after i substitution after i n substitution we got the value f of n equal to f of n upon 2 to the power i plus 1 so so we get the f of 1 in the substituted Substitution n, then we get f of one, which is nothing but f of n by n. So n, so two to the power i become n. So what we can do? Two to the power k equal to after k substitution we can take two to the power k equal to n. We can take both side log. So log two to the power k base two equal to log n. So two base two equal to one. So k equal to log n base two. So that's the way in which we can find the value of k equal to log n base two. Now the another problem which we discuss is we can find the domain and range of the particular functions f of n equal to square root eighty one minus x square. 
it is in the real value we can find 81 minus x square is a member of r 81 minus x square is greater than or equal to 0 so x square less than or equal to 81 and mod of x lies in between minus 9 and 9 so the value of x subdomain is nothing but lies between minus 9 and 9 so that is the problem number 2 that the function is given of the real value and you can find the domain of that value now the problem number 3 we can discuss that is a function of n to n and f of x5 is given 2x plus 1 into 2 to the power y minus 1 where n is a set of natural number and is a set of natural numbers including 0 including 0 and show that the function f is bijective you can prove that function is bijective so first of all we can prove it is a one to one function it is a one to function and if it is a one to one and one to function then only we can say it is invertible or we can say it is a bijective function so, so first of all n it will be start from 0 1 2 3 up to n number of elements we can take now x5 x sum of i is a member of n and f of x5 equal to 2x plus y 1 into 2 to the power y minus 1. So let's we can take the two variable a and b from n. So x equal to a and y equal to b. So 2a equal to 2x. So now we want to generate this type of equation adding 1 in both sides. What we can generate? 2a plus 1 equal to 2x plus 1. So now that is the equation number 1. After similarly we can find 2 to the power y equal to 2 to the power b. It is in equation number 2. Now multiply equation 1 and 2. We can generate 2a plus 1 into 2 to the power y equal to 2x plus 1 into 2 to the power b. We can just multiply both the equation and we can generate this result is in the form. So now we can just subtract 1. So 2a plus 1, 2 to the power y minus 1 equal to 2x plus 1 into 2 to the power b minus 1. Because we can generate the formula in this equation, in this equation form. So we can say f of ay equal to f of xb. So it is 1 to 1. That is, it is called as a 1 to 1 or it is called as an injective function. Now, the next step we can take as let f of a comma b equal to 0. So, 2a plus 1 into 2 to the power b minus 1 equal to 0. So, 2a plus 1 into 2 to the power b equal to 1. So, it is equal to 1. It is we can also represent in the form of 2 to the power 1 equal to 2 to the power 0 into 1. So, 2a plus 1 cannot be even, cannot even number and 2 to the power b equal to 2 to the power and a plus 1 equal to 1. b equal to 0 and a equal to 0. So it is subjective. So when it is a subjective function, so both are subjective, we can say it is a bijective. It is both subjective and 1 to 1, then we can say it is a bijective function. So in that proof, what we can do, first, first we can equation in, in the form of 2x plus 1 into 2 to the power y. We can take any two element a comma b from the set of natural number. Then x equal to a and y equal to b. Now we can generate this uh, element in the equation this one. So 2a equal to 2x. So 2a plus 1 equal to 2x plus 1. It is the equation 1. And 2 to the power y equal to 2 to the power b. Now we can multiply the equation and we can generate it a 1 to 1 relation then we can prove it is a subjective so it is a subjective and 1 to 1 that's why we can say it is a bijective it is both subjective and this one that's why it is a bijective relation now the, this type of problem we can generally discuss in the part of functions now the, we can take one more problem So the other problem is that if the three functions are given f, g and h 
So the from function n to n, it is f of n equal to n plus one and g of n equal to two n, h of n equal to zero if n is even, and h of n equal to one if n is odd. So we can find f composite f. So f composite f we can find. So what is the value of f? f of n plus one. N plus one is nothing but we can generate the value of f of n plus one, which is n plus one plus one equal to n plus two. Now we can find f of z. It is nothing but f of g of something function n. So g of n is nothing but two n, which is f of two n. f of two n is equal to two n plus two. So it is f of two n. f of two n two n plus One and now we can find g of f. It is g of f of n, which is nothing but g of n plus one, which is generated to n plus two. And g of h equal to g of h of n. It is zero if n is even and one if n is odd. So in this form, in this way, how to generate the solution? If the equation is given. f of n equal to n plus one and g of n equal to two n. That is given. We can find out f composite f. First, f of f. F function is nothing but n plus one. So we can f of n plus one. Here we can n plus one is the nth value plus one. It is n plus two. G of f of g f of g of n. So g of n is the two n. So now we can just place the value of n two n plus one. Z of f, z of f of n, f of n is the n plus one. So z of n plus one is nothing but multiply by the two. It is got the two n plus two. And similarly, z composite as z of h of n. H of n is the two value, zero if n is even and one if it is odd. So that type of problem generally will be uh, discussed in the part of function. So thank you.